When it comes to taking your videos to the next level, one of the things that I find super helpful is to use overlays. There are a ton of different kinds of overlays from cool little glitches like this to light leaks. Maybe you've got uh, little puffs of smoke, you've got explosions, you've got uh, cool little tech things like this going across the screen right now. They really can help take your video to that next level. Recently, I used an overlay of a UFO to create a little clip that looked like this. So today I'm gonna to show you how I created that UFO clip. I'm gonna show you how I use the overlays and how I start to think about what that overlay looks like when it's on top of my video. And along the way, I'm gonna share some tips and tricks on how to use these overlays and things you wanna think about as you're applying them to your video. Because we want these clips to look the best that they can, so there's some things we wanna think about as we're laying it on top of our footage. Today's video is sponsored by Motion Array and all my overlays come from Motion Array. They've got a ton of great stuff there that is really easy to work with, from sound effects to music, to stock video, stock photos, overlays that we're going to be talking about here today. I'm going to show you how you can find all the overlays on the uh, Motion Ray website. You can even use a free account and go grab some freebies, right? Who don't want some freebies? Hit the link up in the description below to check it out. But for now, let's jump into Resolve, and I'm going to show you how to work with overlays and some of the things to think about uh, while you're using them. So let's jump into Resolve. Let's check it out. Oh, oh. Jumping into DaVinci Resolve, I'm in the Edit tab. Now let's talk about how we use this UFO overlay to create this cool little effect here. So when you get your overlays, one of the best things you can do is look for ones that have a transparent background. Now you're not always going to find that, but a lot of times you can, and especially if you take a look on Motion Array's website, a lot of the uh, overlays that you can find there already have that transparent background. So that's going to take a lot of the work out of using some of these overlays when you need to use them. You can key out black backgrounds or white backgrounds if you need to, but it makes it a lot easier if the background's already transparent. So, so here I've got the UFO materialization uh, overlay here, right? And if we take a look at it, if I play through it, you can see comes flying on the screen here. Notice it's pretty huge. It does look different than the scene. It doesn't look like it fits in all that great. There's uh, some things we can do to make it look a little bit better. So the nice part about overlays is that basically all you need to do is take your original footage. In this case, I just filmed a little clip of the sky and I'm gonna put that overlay on top of my base footage. So in this case, I want the UFO to be, look like it's flying in the sky in between the, the tree line here, the trees. And all I have to do is put it on a track above whatever it is I want it to be, you know, above in the video, right? In this case, the, the sky and the trees. So I drop that onto the, uh, track two here, right? And I've got my base layer track in video one. And if I scroll back and forth, you know, we can see how it kind of works. So when I'm working with overlays, sometimes, you know, it doesn't matter. I could just drop it on there if it's some cool lights or um, maybe it's some kind of cool little design or something like that, uh, like you saw in the intro there. But if it's something like this that I really want to make it fit in the scene a little bit better, there's a couple things I can think about uh, as I put it in here, a couple things to do and, and change that might help it fit a little bit better in our scene. So the first thing that I'm thinking is that it looks way too big for this particular scene, right? So I don't want the UFO to be, you know, ginormous there. So what I want to do is shrink it down. So I'm just going to select my clip. I'm going to open my inspector right here, open your inspector. And I'm just going to grab my zoom and I'm going to shrink it down. And how big do I want it in the sky? Meh, it's kind of subjective, right? I'm going to say a quarter, quarter of the size, so 0.25. So if I just play through that, how does that look? It looks kind of more like, uh, you know, what I'm thinking there. And now one of the things we notice is because this was sized to be full screen, when we get to the end of our clip, if I just move forward frame by frame, we can see it kind of gets sliced off there, right? And that doesn't look good. So a couple ways you can avoid that. You could make the clip shorter. Uh, what I like to do is I'm just going to fade the clip out as well as make it a little bit shorter. So that way, wherever it's still in the frame all the way, looks like right about there, that's where I want it to be completely faded out. So I'm just going to shorten my clip. And now I'm going to leave the fade on there. And as I play through it, boom, it just kind of fades out. So I think that works out pretty good, right? Not too bad. Now, the next thing with this particular overlay that I'm looking at is that it just looks a little dark and, and it kind of doesn't really blend in so much. So we're going to jump into the color tab and, uh, and apply a few things, a few adjustments that uh, hopefully help kind of blend it into the background a little bit. 
So I'm going to select my clip, jump on over into the color tab. And now that I'm in the color tab, there's a few things we can start to work with. So first, I'm just going to, on this first note here, I'm just going to try and lighten it up a little bit because it looks a little dark, I think, you know, compared to everything else around it. So if I brighten it up a little bit, you know, uh, maybe something like that. Uh, let's just zoom in on it here a little bit. And then uh, maybe I want to, let me see, maybe drop the contrast back just a little bit, right? And let's just see how it's starting to look here. If I zoom out, okay, maybe it looks like it's coming out of the clouds right? And it's fading in. And I think it's starting to fit in a little bit better there. Um, you know, I didn't want it to look too dark because I don't think that works out so well. I think that um, that's kind of a bit of a dead giveaway, right? So what else could we do to it to kind of help it blend in a little bit? Well, if you need to, you could change the color temperature a little bit, right? I don't know if we need to in this case, but we can make it cooler or warmer if we, if we need to. So maybe I just want to tweak it a little bit. Maybe warm it up just a little bit. Adjust your tint if you need to. But reducing that contrast really kind of helps helps it from standing out as much, I think. Now, if you think the colors on it are a little, a little too much, you could always come down to your saturation and drop that back a little bit. Maybe lower that down. You could always play with the shadows, depending on your object, you know, in this case. I don't think I need to make too many tweaks and changes, but I think this is kind of looking a little bit better than if I turn it off. We can see how much darker it is, right? And even my background, you know, if I turn off all the grades. So let me just turn off this node here. See how dark it is? We kind of brightened it up. I think it kind of helps it just kind of blend into the sky a little bit better. Now, the other thing that I did add onto here was a little bit of motion blur, right? So maybe I want it to just be a little more blurred, you know, not as crispy on the edges and everything as it's moving around. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a new node here by using Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC plus the S. So next, I'm going to come up to my effects library. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And we want to look for motion blur. And you can search for it or just scroll down and find it. Here's a little motion blur. And we could do motion trails, motion blur. You try whatever might work good for you. In this case, I'm just going to go with a little motion blur. I'm going to drop it onto my node number two. And then we've got our, our different types of blur here. I'm going to say, give me the better blur. Motion range, we'll leave it on medium for now. Motion blur, I'm gonna crank it up a little bit and we'll see how it looks. I'll give it a second to render up there. And now if we look at our clip here, we can see as we scrub through it a little bit, right? Look at the at the way the edges are here, right? As it's kind of moving along, we can see it's blurred, right? Versus if I turn off the motion blur, see it's kind of a little bit more crispy there, right? It's a, a little more defined with uh, some of the, the effects that are happening there. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back on. And you can see it just blurs it out a little bit because if it's moving in the sky, you might see a little bit of blur on there, right? And how much you wanna put in in this case, that's up to you. I'm gonna crank it up even more just cause, hey, why not, right? So you can see the motion blur in action there really kind of smooths it out as it's moving around. So I like that. So I'm just taking a look at our video and watching it as a whole here, here's what it looks like. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad, right? So that's how you can take uh, something like a UFO overlay here and kind of add it into your, your project, put it on top of some footage, and it doesn't have to be a UFO. It could be any kind of overlay, anything that you want to lay on top of your video. Could be an element or an object like this, or it could just be something cool that, you know, flickers on the screen, maybe it's a light leak, maybe it's, uh, you know, some, some flashes or, or something like that. I use overlays all the time in DaVinci Resolve here that I get from Motion Array. Super easy. Here's how you find all of these cool overlays on Motion Array. And then I just want to show you how I've got them set up in Power Bin so I can easily drag and drop them into my projects and use them whenever I want. So here, check it out on Motion Array's website. So when you get on their website, you can sign up for a free account. You don't have to do a paid version. They do have a lot of free stuff on there, but you can also jump in and grab, uh, you know, the paid version where you have access to everything if you're interested. I'll leave a link in the description below. You can check it out. But here's how you find all of the awesome overlays and things that I use all the time. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to go to videos and I'm going to go to motion graphics. And in the motion graphics section, you can filter it over here. We have overlays. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And that's gonna filter it and show me all of the cool overlays that I can get from Motion Ray. And there is tons of stuff here. And a lot of this stuff already has those transparent backgrounds for you. You don't have to go in and key things out and all that. It's already set up for you. I mean, all kinds of things from icons to there's a bullet for you to subscribe like buttons to uh, HUD, HUD, what's it called? Heads up over, heads up uh, displays like this right here. There's all kinds of awesome things that you can get here from Motion Ray. It's almost endless. If you have an idea and you search for it here on Motion Ray, there's a good chance that you're gonna find it. Look at that, you even got a running chicken. What are you gonna do with a running chicken? I don't know, but it's there in case you want it. I've been using Motion Ray for a long time to get all my overlays, to get sound effects, music, 
video clips, stock video, stock photos, tons of great stuff. It's really like a one-stop shop for all the assets that you might need to make your video. A huge thank you to Motion Array for sponsoring today's video. If it wasn't for awesome companies like Motion Array sponsoring videos on my channel, I wouldn't be able to sit here and make videos for you guys and teach you Resolve and video editing and all the fun stuff that we do here. So thank you, Motion Array. Really appreciate you guys. You're awesome. I love your stuff. And if you guys need some awesome assets for your videos, you can save some money by using the link in the description below. So jumping back into DaVinci Resolve here, let me just show you where and how I store all of my overlays here in DaVinci Resolve. So they do come from Motion Array. I'm going to jump back into the Edit tab right here. Go ahead and open up my media pool. And I've got my power bins open right here. You see power bins, master. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. Now, if you don't see your power bins, here's how you open it up. Three little dots at the top. Show power bins. Make sure that that's checked on. So once I'm in my power bins here, I have a whole folder I created called overlays. And if I just go through and click on some of these things, here's some of like the uh, the sparkle effects that I was mentioning. You know, you just they just kind of create cool little effects on your screen. You can do, obviously, the film overlays. I'm sure you guys have seen those or the dirt or the dust. There's cool arrows that you can use in your videos. And all this has transparent backgrounds. So all I have to do is drag and drop it onto the screen. Smoke effects, fire effects. Here's the cool tech revealer that I had shown a little bit earlier in the video. A lot, a lot of cool stuff here uh, that you can just drag and drop right into DaVinci Resolve. And I like to have these assets available in every project which is why I use them in a power bin, store them in there, so then I can access them whenever I want in any project. So here's a really good tip for you when it comes to using overlays. So let's say you do get an overlay, right, that has a black background like this. We have this tech, uh, you know, little circuit board thing happening here on the screen. And notice the background's black, but I still have my UFO and my other footage under there. Well, do I have to go in and key out all the black? You actually don't. Here is a quick tip for you uh, that you can use to get rid of that black background really fast. Select your clip, open up your inspector, and then you want to come down to composite right here. Open that up, and under composite mode, we can change the composite mode to automatically get rid of that black or white background for us. So if you go ahead and click the drop down, you can say add. That's one way that it'll get rid of it. Now you can see it's kind of light in there, right? So add is one option that we have. If you scroll down to lighten, that's another overlay mode that will allow you to see the effect but get rid of that black background. You can also use the screen mode and that's gonna help get rid of the black background for you too. So if I scroll through, play through, you can see we see it there and we don't have to go in and key out that black background. So that is a huge tip right there that really saves you a lot of time. If you have a solid black or solid white background, Use your composite blend modes to just get rid of that really quick. So with these couple tips, you are going to be off and running using some overlays in your videos and really just help take your videos to that next level. So my challenge to you guys today is to use one of your clips that you already have or maybe a project you already have. Jump on that Motion Ray website, even sign up for the free account. Find some kind of overlay that you can use on your video and I want you to put it on the video, give it a try, tweak it a little bit, see what you can do and what you can make. And I want you guys to drop a link in the description below because I want to go check it out and see what you guys make. Now, if enough of you guys drop down some links with uh, some samples, maybe I'll make a video about it and we'll give you a little shout out on there and I'll just give you my thoughts on the videos that you guys come up with. So that wraps this one up, guys. Thank you so much to Motion Ray for sponsoring today's video. I really appreciate their support. They are an awesome service. If you guys need some assets for your projects, definitely check them out. There's like a one-stop shop for everything that you need for your videos. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.